Hi everybody, welcome to this next video. So in this one, we're going to be looking at laws of indices. Um, we'll come up on foundation and on higher. Um, some of these only specific to higher, some of them on both. So let's jump straight in and have a little look at what we've got. The first thing we've got here is this um, right hand side looks quite complicated. There are seven different rules there that I've written down. Some of them you might already be familiar about, but um, I'm gonna go through each one show you an example of how it works and what we do um, so at least then you can see how they're used with application and being used within a question so <clears throat> let's have a look at this first example here so what we're saying in this instance is we're saying x to the uh, sorry a to the power of x times a to the power of y we just add these two indices together so in this instance here we've got x to the power of 8 times x to the power of 4 my answer should be x to the power of 12. You are just adding both of these together. Now, if we look at an example with a number involved, so 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 7, your base value, which is what that is, stays the same. And again, you just add these together. So all you're doing is 5 plus 7, and that would incidentally also end up giving us 12 as well. Okay, so... 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 7 is 2 to the power of 12. The 2 doesn't change, but you add those indices. And if it says an x involved, you still keep the x the same, add the indices. So we've done that first rule there. Let's look at the second rule. So a to the power of x divided by a to the power of y. All you do is you subtract the indices. Okay. Now, instead of writing that rule uh, with a division, what I've done is my example here, it has just a fraction sign which again, you know, just means divide anyway. So in this instance, we've got 12 and four. So X will still be your answer. You're doing 12 minus four to get eight. So your answer for that one would be X to the power of eight. Now, difference here is that actually what we've got is we've got some numbers involved. So if you have an instance where you've got numbers involved as well, you do your 15 divided by five, first of all. So 15 divided by five is three. So you effectively deal with the, the um, integer value at the start, and then you can deal with the indices there. So seven minus two, still gonna have your X, seven minus two gives you five. So that's your second rule there, okay? It can be written with a divide sign, but it could also be written as a fraction, knowing that that means divide. Let's look at rule number three now. So moving on, if you see a bracket, you basically, multiply those two together so the x and the y end up being multiplied together let's look at um, this example down here on the left so x to the power of three to the power of five means x you times those together to the power of 15. the reason that is is because actually what you're doing is you're saying x to the power of three times 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 x to the power of three, because obviously to the power of five means multiplied by itself five times, one, two, three, four, five. And then obviously if we then go back to this rule, this is the same as rule one, we would add these together. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, which is how I've got 15, or the shortcut, so you multiply those together. Now, with this next one, a common answer would be this, pupils would put two a to the power of six, because they would multiply those. But the problem with that is, the a to the power of six is correct, but if we use that logic that we just spoke about here, effectively what you're actually saying is 2a squared times 2a squared times 2a squared, which means you've got to do two times two times two. Now two times two is four, four times two is eight, so you know eight should be in there somewhere. Okay, so actually your answer becomes 8a to the power of six. So not 2a to the power of six, it is 8a to the power of 6. Okay, so that's rule number three. Rule number four is the easiest rule of them all. You just need to remember, this is not a degree sign, this is a zero. Anything to the power of zero is always one. So x to the power of zero, your answer is one. Two to the power of zero, your answer is one. Now, if you want to understand why, here is a good explanation. So if we start two to the power of zero, we'll do two to the power of one, two to the power of two, two to the power of three. Now, 2 to the power of 3, we just worked out there, so it's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 2 to the power of 2 means 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 to the power of 1 just means 2. 
And what we're going to do is work out why this is one. Now, the reason is, is because actually, if you end up going backwards from this point, to go from eight to four, I divide by two. To go from four to two, I divide by two. And therefore, to go to two backwards here, I would divide by two. And two divided by two is one. So that's quite a nice way to try and remember it if you're not sure about that rule number four. Okay, just anything to the power of zero is always one. So now we're starting to look at fractional and negative indices. These tend to be the ones that come up in higher more. Um, so let's start looking at what happens with rule number five, because that does look quite confusing in the way it's written. So what you need to remember is, if you see a fractional indice, whatever the denominator is, goes on the outside, and whatever the numerator is, will end up being your um, indice at the end that you then have to multiply by. Think about it like this, the denominator is at the bottom, so it drops to the outside. You will always need to put a root sign. So anytime you see a fractional indice, do root sign, whatever the denominator value is put on the outside. Whatever the numerator is will then go on um, as my final step. And I'll show you how that looks with this question here. So question five, 64 to the power of a half. So I see it's a fractional indice straight away. So I see it's a fractional indice straight away. So I'm putting a root sign. I put 64 underneath the root sign. Because it's two on the outside, that becomes square root. And then it's effectively to the power of 1. You do this part first, so the square root of 64, which is 8. 8 to the power of 1 is just 8. So 64 to the power of a half is 8. Another example that's quite common is you'll see 100 to the power of a half. A lot of students put the answer down as 50 here, but remembering, you would square root 100 and then to the power of 1. Well, the square root of 100 is 10. 10 to the power of 1 is 10. So your answer for 100 to the power of a half is just 10. Okay, I'll just move out of the way so a bit more space later on. So let's look at this next one, which is 125 to the power of two thirds. Following that rule, we're still going to need to put a root sign. We're still going to need to put 125 because if you look at our rule up here, the a still goes under. Now the numerator, sorry, the denominator drops to the outside. So we have cubed root and the numerator goes there. So what we're saying is we do this bit first. We are looking for the cubed root of 125. So what times by itself is 125? The answer is 5. And then we've now got to square it. OK, so we do this bit afterwards. 5 squared, your answer is 25. OK, so that's rule number 5. Let's look at rule number 6. So rule number 6 here is a negative indice. So if you see a negative indice, there's a couple of ways you can think about this. You can either think, okay, I've got a negative, so we turn it to a fraction, or we can start thinking about reciprocals and inverse. So three to the power of minus two can actually be written as three over one. So any fraction can be put over, uh, any integer can be put over one, and it's still the same value. To remove, so you can think about it like this, to remove the negative part, you flip it upside down. Okay, so instead of it being 3 over 1, it becomes 1 over 3, and then it just becomes squared. Now, the reason it's squared is because that's what the indice is. Therefore, you're effectively saying 1 over 3 times 1 over 3, which would just become 1 over 9, because you're doing 1 over 3 times 1 over 3 as a fraction would be top times top, bottom times bottom which is just one over nine, okay? So that's quite a nice way of thinking about um, negative indices. So looking at the next example, you could have a go yourself, but put it as five over one, and then think about how you can then write that. So let's flip it upside down, it becomes one over five, and then it's one over five cubed, which is the same as doing one over five times one over five times one over five, which is one over five times five times five, which is 125, okay? So that's quite a quick way of thinking about your negative indices. And actually that will help us when we look at these um, examples down here, or this example, should I say. So that's rule number, so that's rule number six. Let's look at this final rule before we talk about some more complex things we could start thinking about as well. So rule number seven, 
it's basically a combination of the two rules previously mentioned. So we put it as 25 over 1 and we're going to flip it again. So instead of it being 25 over 1, it becomes 1 over 25. And what we're saying is that's 25 to the power of a half. Now, using the previous rule we've just used here with our um, fractional indice, we would need to put a root sign. So we square root the 1 over 25. It becomes a square root because the 2 drops the outside and then to the power of 1. Then what you're basically saying is the square root of 1, which is 1, and the square root of 25, which is 5. So that just becomes 1 over 5 to the power of 1 which is just 1 over 5. Now, if you wanted to look at that in this next example, you could pause the video and have a go at this one, or you can just watch me do it. So we put it over 1 again. It becomes 1 over 64 now. We've dealt with that negative part in the fact that we have um, flipped it upside down. And again, let's go back to this concept. It becomes cubed root because the 3 is at the bottom. 1 over 64, and it will be to the power of 2 this time. So when you work this out, you're saying the cubed root of 64 and the cubed root of 1. Well, the cubed root of 1 is 1. The cubed root of 64, what times by itself gives you 64? The answer is 4. And then you still need to square that. So effectively, you're times it by itself, which is 1 over 16, because you're doing 1 multiplied by 1 and 4 multiplied by 4. So this answer would be 1 over 16. Okay. So the only way that gets a little bit more complex is if you look at these um, last two examples we've got down here. So in this one, we've got 64 to the over 100 to the power of a half. Well, let's just think about what we've just done in these examples as well. We know it's a fractional indice. So because it's a fractional indice, I'm going to have a root sign. Then you've got 64 and 100. The two drops to the outside, so it's going to be square root to the power of 1. And all you're saying is, what's the square root of 64? 8. What's the square root of 100? 10. And then it's that to the power of 1, which means your answer is just 8 over 10. And the final one here, question 9 I've put, basically is a negative fractional indice of a fraction. So let's think logically again about how we can deal with each part. If you think about it in the fact that by having, um, when it's got a negative, by you flipping it upside down, that deals with the negative part. So therefore, instead of it being 27 over 64, we can call it 64 over 27. That deals with that negative part, first of all. And then it's still 2 over 3. Then we can go back to our rules that we've just done there. So where it is um, 2 thirds, we will have a root sign, 64 over 27. The 3 drops to the outside, so it becomes cube root and then it will be squared. So remember, numerator goes on the outside there. The cube root of 64, as we've already been through, is 4. And the cube root of 27 is 3. Then we need to square that. So remember, by squaring it, you're effectively doing 4 over 3 times 4 over 3, which is 16 over 9. So your answer would be 16 over 9. Or if it asks you to put it as a mixed number, because that is an improper fraction, how many times is 9 going to 16? Well, there's 1. And what's left over? 7 over 9. OK, so they are these last ones here are more complicated. So 5 onwards would be in your higher. Um, and by doing that, you are combining quite a few together as well. Finally, we can look at this more complex example as well. Now, if we go back to rule number 1, we know that if we are multiplying indices, we add them. Now, the problem here is that 8 and 2 are not the same number. So because they're not the same number, you can't actually just go uh, any. You can't just add these together. OK, because you don't know what this base value would be. So you can't go something to the power of 7. OK. So what we have to do is we have to turn them to the same base values. This 8 is going to turn to 2. So you've got to think to yourself, how else can I write 8? Well, looking at what we did up here, we know that 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2, which is the same as 2 cubed. So we can call 8 2 cubed. But it's still going to be to the power of 3. So all I've done now is I've changed this 8 for 2 cubed, and I still need that cubed. 
This two is already a two, so we keep it as two to the power of four. So we're calling these our base values. You need to turn the same. OK, now let's go back to our laws of indices. If we look at rule number three up here, if it's in brackets, you multiply the indices together. So two to the power of three to the power of three actually becomes two to the power of nine because you do three times three times two to the power of four. And now we can add the indices together because the base values are the same. So your answer would be two to the power of 13. So that would be my answer to that question. OK, using that logic, you can have a go at this last one here that I've got. Um, this one just here. Now, the problem is, is that 27 and 3 aren't the same base value. So you need to turn 27 into a power of 3. Again, if you want to pause the video to have a go at it, you can. Um, so 27, I'm going to just write as 3 to the power of 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And then that is still squared times by 3 to the power of 6, because that's already a base level of 3. So that's absolutely fine. Multiply these together because it's in brackets. So that's 3 to the power of 6 times 3 to the power of 6 means your answer will be 3 to the power of 12. OK, so if you ever get questions where your base values aren't the same, the first thing to do is to make the base values the same. That's everything you need to know about laws of indices. Hope you found that useful. Hope it's clear. Um, as I say, if there's anything in there that you're not 100 percent sure on, go back, rewatch it, make some notes on it and uh, they will be pretty useful for you in your exams. I suggest you write these rules down as well somewhere, post it note um, or on a flashcard somewhere and get your head around, especially these last ones, how to do those. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you all in the next video.